Hello there, Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com, and I'm about to speak with UFC light heavyweight Jared Cannonier as he is set to face Steve Bossy at the Ultimate Fighter 25 finale on July 7th. So let's give Cannonier a call and find out what he's been up to since his last fight in Brooklyn, New York. Find out what he has in store for Steve Bossy. And maybe talk about him quitting his full-time job to focus more on his fighting career. Ah, Mr. Hey, what's up, Eddie? Mr. Jared Cannonier, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, can you click the little video icon for me? Ah, beautiful, 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 beautiful. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. How you been? Uh, I've been well. I've been well. So, yeah, man, you're 92 right now in your mixed martial arts career, 2-2 two and two in the UFC, and you are headed back to Las Vegas for the Ultimate Fighter 25 finale, taking on Steve Bossy. How are things? Things couldn't be better. Um, I recently quit my job. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I recently quit my job at the end of May, so now I am officially a full-time fighter. And I am officially enthralled in that fight life, you know, doing two a days, nothing but training, nothing but mixed martial arts, no, no going to the office and sitting for 10 hours and then trying to train. No more of that. Um, and the uh, it's already it's already starting to, uh, you know, the results are already starting to show, you know, I've got abs now. <laughs> That's always cool. I'm a bit more flexible than I was. Um I'm able to focus on myself, you know, really be selfish, you know, as bad as it sounds, but I'm able to focus on myself and make myself a better fighter, which is going to be bad for anybody in the light heavyweight or hell, even the middleweight division for that matter. So congratulations on, on taking the, the big leap on quitting the full-time job. Was there maybe a, like a, a breaking point or, or something that maybe tipped the weighing scales that made you finally say, okay, this is the move I want to make? Well, of course, money is always the issue when it comes to quitting a job to do a job. You know, when you have a, a family, you know what I'm saying? And uh, my job offered me health insurance, life insurance, and a buttload of other uh, benefits that the UFC has yet to offer. Um, so it was a bit, it was definitely a hard decision to make. But um, I have faith in my abilities that I'll be able to make enough money to compensate for all that stuff in the UFC or in this uh, fight game period, you know, whether it be in the UFC or any other promotion. I know I'm going to be successful. Um, it's now that I'm able to train, and uh, I'm not locked down to one place. So currently, I'm in I'm in Phoenix training at the lab and uh, sharpening my tools there. And uh, it's going to show on July 7th and every fight after that. Okay, so you were you're able to travel a little bit for your training camps now. You're down at the MMA lab with John Crouch and all them. Yeah, I'm actually relocating. You know, I get to move now. I don't have to stay in Alaska. And, you know, stay isolated up there and work with what, I had, with what I have, which isn't bad. You know, I had some good training up there, but it wasn't catered to a mixed martial arts, a professional mixed martial artist, you know. And um, and it was time for that. It was time that I needed that, especially fighting at the level I'm fighting, you know, fighting the guys who I'll be fighting now. And um, it's just a smarter move to just to ensure victory in the in the uh, in the sport. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be a wise move, absolutely. Um, sometimes you'll see guys who maybe have a, a lot of potential but don't necessarily leave their base camp, and, you know, we never really see them maximize that potential, so to speak. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so the last time we saw you, you were in the Big Apple, UFC Brooklyn. Uh, what would you think of traveling to New York City? I believe it was your first time, right? Yeah, it was my first time traveling to New York, but... Uh... Traveling is traveling. You know, you expect to see something different, in which I did get to see, you know, different culture, different different type of people living in a different atmosphere, which is fine. But during fight week, you know, I don't really go out and get out and see the sights and take in, you know, the atmosphere and stuff like that. So um, it, it definitely was an experience to be able to go there and, you know, look around and see how how those people are living and, and again, take it all in. But, you know, it was it was business for me. I pretty much stayed in the hotel or went down the street to get some food or to the store, but stayed in the hotel, eat, sleep, train. 
Okay, now you took on Glover Teixeira, who was the number two guy in the world at the time. You ended up dropping the decision. Um, in the first round, you got taken down and put in a guillotine that was pretty tight, but you managed to weather the storm. You got out of it, eventually made your way over to the cage, got back to your feet, and ended up putting some hands on Glover. And I don't know if you know, if you realized in the moment, but you actually pretty you, you hurt him pretty badly. He did the the chicken dance for a little bit there at the end. Were you aware that that he was that hurt? Oh, absolutely. I would, I mean, not the fact that he was that hurt. He definitely hit the fact if, if he, as if he was disoriented or anything. Um, the the definitely the chicken leg gave it away that you know the shots were effective. Um, to be honest, man, I could have. I mean, even just hitting him with the little jabs, they were affecting him. If not physically, they were affecting him, affecting him mentally. Not only him, but anybody who steps in that cage with me knows that my striking is going to be superior to theirs. I don't care who it is, and I don't care what you've done. The way I've honed my striking skills is is um is is like nothing anybody has ever done before. You know, it's to be honest. You know, it'd be kind of reminiscent of what Bruce Lee went through and training himself and developing his own martial arts style and stuff like that, or any other. A fighter who develops their own style. It's my style of, of striking, and uh, it's still growing and it's still getting better. You know, I'm still adding a whole bunch of more tools to that tool bag, and it's going to be um, a beautiful thing to witness in the octagon. Like, I, like I said, with Glover, he knew he knew that I was going to win a striking exchange, so he had no other choice but to take me down. He went. He did the. He he. You know, did the veteran move. He did exactly what he needed to do to get the win. Um, that guillotine was tight, but um, it's nothing I never seen before. I was able to uh, stay calm and escape and get back, get like, like you say, get back to the feet and get my hands on him. Um, yeah, I didn't go my way. He did all the right things. You know, he kept me down. You know, every time I tried to get up, he adjusted. He threatened with the guillotine. But um, to be, to, in, my, in my opinion, that fight was still a victory for me. Fight number three in the world or number two in the world at that time, Glover Teixeira, who I'm a huge fan of, who I've watched for a very long time. And... Um, to be able to go the distance with him and not take the damage that most people take, you know what I'm saying? And um, I was very happy. It really upped my confidence in my striking, and um, it's going to show in my next fight. Yeah, I mean that has to that has to do wonders for the confidence. I mean he's been you know wiping out top five, top ten, top fifteen guys like they haven't been able to last with them. And I mean you remained relatively safe on you know from your back where do you feel like you would rank yourself now i mean you've been in there with top five former title challengers where do you kind of uh rank yourself so to speak in my own mind i'm the very best i don't care who's out there you can be dc john jones any of them who are you know arguably the best in the in the ufc right now but i'm better than them you know what i'm saying and um They'll tell you differently. Anybody will tell you that they're the best, blah, 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 blah. But So I'm going to do the same, and I believe it. I'm better than these guys, especially when it comes to the stand-up. You know, I can't stress that enough. And it's that's my thing. You know, that's my stick. You see me walking around, you think, oh, yep, he's going to punch me if he, if he gets a chance, and it's going to look good, and it's going to hurt. But um, one thing a lot of these guys don't know is that I'm an animal on the ground, too. You know what I'm saying? I'm a killer gorilla on the ground. I'm a killer on the ground. I don't get on the ground and hold people down. If I'm on top, it's going to hurt. You're going to give up or you're going to get out of there. So, um, and I expect to show that in my next fight. You know what I'm saying? The, these guys the lab are honing that that, that aspect of my my uh, my skill set. It's my offensive wrestling and, um, and defensive wrestling as well. So, uh, again, I'm excited. You know, the fans are excited. So anybody who's not on the bandwagon better hop on now because the Killer Gorilla don't sit around and wait for people. Yeah, I mean, we actually, we've actually we seen a little bit of, of your ground and pound when you fought Cyril Asker. I mean, you absolutely elbowed him into oblivion. So that's that's interesting. You think you maybe take a more grapple-heavy approach for Steve Bossy? I'm going to take, well, I'm going to take what, he got, what he's going to give me. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever he lets he let, hangs out there. I'm going to hit him, and I'm going to take him down. So it's just a matter of how he wants it to go down. He can just stand there and let me do it right away, or I can, uh, or I can make it, or I can make it happen. So um, it's all up to how he moves around in there, and uh, 
I expect him to move around a lot. He's not going to stand in front of me. And when he comes in with that same right hand, I'm going to tell him what I'm going to do. I'm going to change levels. I'm going to take you down, Steve. And then, it's, then the fight's going to be over. So prepare yourself. All right? Don't just think it's going to be a stand-up fight. Yeah, Bossy, he's really known for his stand-up. He's, he's got power. He's tough as nails. And he comes forward. He's, he's down to brawl. And, I mean, we've seen that work out bad for him. We've seen it work out good for him. And we've seen him go to war. Which which one do you think is going to show up? Which boss he's going to show up for Cannoneer? The one that shows up every time, you know. Um, he's going to want to sit in the pocket and throw and brawl and throw shots. And um, I'm not that type of striker. I'm not going to stand there with my head on a stick throwing punches. That's just the dumbest thing in the world. And guys don't last long in this league doing that type of stuff. Um, he can do that. I mean, he can he can try to draw out a brawl, like I said. And when he tries to, I'm going to change levels and take him down, or he's going to catch an overhand right or a nice uppercut, and it's going to be it's going to be good night. Okay, now how's the weight cut going for this? I know last time I spoke with you, you told me your wife was in charge of all the cooking. Is that still the case for this one this time around? No, I left my nutritionist at home in Alaska, um, so I'm having to do it all myself. And but with that being said, the weight cut is still going good. I actually, I'm actually ahead of schedule as far as the weight cut goes. So this is going to be yet another easy weight cut, no problem. Two o four on the dot, and uh, I'm, I got abs. I have abs now, so hopefully I get to keep them. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and last time we spoke, you also mentioned that you were flirting with the idea of dropping down to middleweight and fighting at one eighty five. Is that something still kind of on your radar a bit? Yeah, it is definitely there, and and with the way my weight is now, you know, I'm walking around around 215. So that's what middleweights do. They walk around at 215. I'm just not happy. I'm not. I'm not big on cutting 20, 30, 40 pounds. You know, I'll cut 10 pounds easy. I ain't finna sap my uh, sap myself just to make weight. I for one think that's cheating to try to get that big of a size advantage on guys. You know, if you're a bad man, you'll fight the biggest and best. You know, find a challenge and then overcome the challenge. That's how you become the baddest man on the planet. And um, so, yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I am. You know, all, all, all only thing that has to happen is folks have to witness it. And uh, I'm well, I, and we're on the path of that happening right now. Okay. Now, how do you see the fight playing out? I know you don't like to do predictions, but how do you envisioning the end of the match? A finish. Him on the ground and me standing up, raising up the name of God every time. Or or if I lose, I'm going to raise up the hand of God every time. But how I see this happening, a finish. Okay? It's not going 15 minutes. I will not allow that to happen this time. And, uh, again, I'm a different fighter after that Glover fight. Um, and um, a finish. All right? Whether he, either way, he's going to end up on the ground. Either I punch him on the ground or I take him down on the ground and put him out that way. But he's going to end up on the ground. Okay. Now, what would be next for Jared Cannonier? Do you have anybody in mind that you're going to call out? Or? Um, all of them. <laughs> so any of them. Any, any one of them. As long as the UFC pays me, I'll fight any of those. Any of them. Um, to be honest, though. <laughs> last time I uh the last time somebody asked me, I said I asked for a can and they gave me Glover to share. So uh <laughs> you know, whatever, man. I don't care. I'll fight anybody, you know. I dig it, so, I dig it. Now um But then again, um, you know, I have to be smart too. You know, I have a career I and mean, this is my livelihood now. So I can't just go out there and fight anybody. So I me personally I'll fight anybody. As a career move, I mean, what would be a smart career move would be to uh, take the, the fight that'll make the most money, the one that I can win easiest to me. So uh, give me a can. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it, man. I dig it. Now, who are uh, some of your sponsors? Who are some of the people that are helping you out on your mixed martial arts journey? What are sponsors? <laughs> yeah, hey. I got friends. You know, I got good friends. Uh, the Murphys, Lauren and Joe Murphy here are letting me uh, sit in their place rent free and, you know, use. Those are good people right there. Those who sponsor me, my friends and my family, you know, those are the people who sponsor me. My wife who puts up with a whole lot of crap and takes care of the kids, and 
pays all the bills and does everything, you know, and, and all I have to do is wake up, train, go to work, fight, and come home and be daddy or, you know, and do all that stuff. So, you know, she sponsors me, you know, my kids sponsors me. They sponsor me with sanity and happiness and fun and excitement and all that good stuff and learning. Um, Hashem, Yahovah is my biggest sponsor. Sponsored me with uh, innumerable blessings, you know, life. Family, all everything I just mentioned is what he's given me. So, uh, and this opportunity, the uh, the job that got me here, the UFC contract, everything, you know. And um, I can go on for days talking about how he has blessed me. So, uh, you know, if you have days, I can keep going. <laughs> hey, I dig it, man. I, I absolutely dig it. Now, uh, what about your outlets, your social media handles, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, maybe? I am on Twitter. Killer Gorilla MMA. I am on Instagram. I think it's Killer Gorilla UFC or Killer Gorilla MMA. And I'm also, so I have an athletic page on Facebook, The Killer Gorilla, T H A, as in The Killer Gorilla. Um, yeah, that's about it, I think. Okay, awesome. Well, Jerry Cannonier, thank you so much for taking out the time once again. Huge fight on your hands. Steve Bossy, he's in your crosshairs. The Ultimate Fighter 25 finale. July 7th. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you for taking out the time to ask some questions and give me an opportunity and outlet to uh, let the people see this beautiful face and hear this beautiful voice. Yeah, get absolutely. Know a little bit about the, who I am. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you. So there you have it. UFC light heavyweight Jared Cannonier headed to the Ultimate Fighter 25 finale on July 7th to take on Steve Bossy. Go check that out. In the meantime, you can read me over at bloodyelbow.com. You can follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado. If you like this interview, you can subscribe to my channel right here. You can subscribe to Bloody Elbow's YouTube channel right there. Check out these interviews. Now go be a good person.